Hello friends, I am once again here with a new topic and this time we will discuss mixed design for cement treated base in flexible pavements. Stabilization of a pavement layer either subgrade, subbase or base has been practiced for a long time due to its several advantages. And IRC 37 also allows use of cement treated material in base and sub base course layer of a flexible payment. Now here cement treated base or cement TCS base basically means aggregate reclaimed asphalt material, crushed slag or soil aggregate mixture stabilized with chemical stabilizer such as cement, lime, lime fly ash or other chemically available stabilizers which can produce a mix of required strength and durability. And the requirement as given in IRC code for a stabilized base are that the minimum UCS, UCS is unconfined compressive strength should be 4.5 to 7 MPa. And this strength can be achieved in seven days in case of cement stabilized material, whereas it may take 28 days in case of soil aggregate mixture stabilized with lime, lime fly ash, or maybe some other stabilizer which takes long time to gain the strength. And what the code suggests that the laboratory strength should be 1.1 times the minimum required strength in the field. The other requirement is of flexible strength. It is generally taken as 20% of UCS and the third requirement is of durability. I will explain these three, how do we determine in the laboratory. Now gradation for the material to be used in cement TCS base is given in this table. And as you can see that this gradation chart is quite wide at his, as it has a large envelope of a specified limit and therefore attempt should be to keep the final grading at almost midpoint of this range to avoid any problem of segregation in the field. Now in addition to the grading of the mix, the material should also satisfy some conditions of physical properties like impact value, uniformity coefficient not less than 5 and this uniformity coefficient is calculated using this equation d60 upon d10. d60 is the size of the material passing 60%. So we read as uh, corresponding to percent passes 60 we read the sieve size that is d60 and similarly for d10 we read the value on x-axis. Now this ratio should not be less than 5 and the liquid limit and plasticity index of the material should be less than 45 and 20 respectively. Now cement can be either ordinary Portland cement, it should be tested as per IGS 269, it can be Portland slag cement, it can be Portland pozzolana cement and accordingly IS code is, is specified for testing of cement to declare it suitable for the use in the base layer. Now with this background, we move to the mixed design procedure and mixed design procedure is in three, four steps. The first step is proportioning of aggregate to obtain the desired mix. And for that, let us assume that there are four aggregates which are available at site, 40 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter and dust. And this table gives you the sieve size analysis of all the four aggregates. Now these are to be proportioned, these are to be mixed in a, def in a definite ratio to get the desired grading. And for that you can watch my video on proportioning of aggregate, which explains three methods of proportioning of aggregate. You can use any of these three methods. And let us say after using this method you get this 40 millimeter is 17%, 20 millimeter 29%, 10 millimeter 18% and that's 36%. And when you mix these aggregates in this ratio, the final grading which you achieve is given in this table. 
Now you can see here that this grading is very close to midpoint grading. And therefore, it is close to the blue line, that is the lower limit. And with this grading, you can avoid the problem of segregation in the field. Second step is to check for physical test of aggregate. And for that, we find out what is D60. And D60 is 14 millimeter. And D10 is 0.2 millimeter. And using these two values, find out what the coefficient of uniformity that is 14 upon 0.2, 70, that is more than 5, and therefore it, it satisfies the condition of Cu. Then you determine the aggregate impact value, liquid limit, plasticity index, and see whether all these values are within permissible limit or not. Once you declare that aggregates are suitable, then the third step is to determine the cement content in the mix to achieve the desired strength. And for that, unconfined compressive strength or simply cube strength is determined. And this cube strength depends on the material properties, casting, that is mixing, compaction, and demolding of the specimen, and curing. And as I told you, curing seven days curing is sufficient for cement treated material, and 28 days curing will be required for lime, lime fly ash, and other materials. So, the minimum UCS for cement treated base a specified IRC code is 4.5 to 7 MPa and laboratory value should be 10% higher than the design strength and therefore first step is to carry out proctor test on aggregate mixture plus cement. So let us say we start with 3% and then increase the cement content in steps of 0.5% or 1%. So you add the water in the cement and aggregate mixture, mix it properly, compact in the modified proctor mold. And for each trial, you take fresh material for in the proctor test because you are adding cement. And if you use the same material again and again and keep on increasing only water, the cement may set. And then you plot the compaction curve and find the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density and repeat this procedure for the next cement content. For unconfined compressive strength, you can prepare the cubes or cylindrical specimen depending upon the type of material being tested. For medium grain material, we can use either cylindrical specimen of 100 millimeter height and 50 millimeter diameter, or we can use 150 millimeter cubic specimen. For coarse grain material, 150 millimeter cubic specimen is specified. So cubic specimen can be, can be used for all materials, medium grain as well as coarse grain material, whereas identical specimen can be used for medium grain material also. Now, once you determine the OMC and maximum dry density at each cement content, then we prepare the cube for each cement content at its OMC and maximum dry density. And density is required to determine the material required for making a specimen because the volume of the cube is 15 into 15 into 15, that is 3,375 centimeter cube. And if you assume that the density of the mix is 2.15 gram per centimeter cube, then required quantity of the material to make one cube will be around 7.26 kg. So if you are, let us say, adding 3% cement content, then 40 millimeter aggregate will be required 0 0.7. 0 0.17 is the 17% aggregate you are mixing. 7.26 total weight of the specimen and divide by 1.03 because when you are adding 3% cement, the total percentage in the mix will be 103. 100% aggregate plus 3% cement. And that way, you can calculate what will be the requirement of different types of aggregates, 40 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter, dust and cement, and that will add, that will become 7.265 kg, which is the required material for making one cube. So three cubes are made at each cement content, and then, then repeat the procedure for other cement contents also. 
can cure this specimen either by dipping the sample in water or by covering by jute bags for desired number of days, seven or 28 days. And then after curing period, we test the specimen as per IRC SP89. And as I told you earlier, the mix in the laboratory should have a strength between 4.95 and 7.7 .7 MPa. So we plot this type of graph, how UCS changes with cement content. And from this graph, you choose the desired value of UCS and corresponding to this UCS, you find out what is the cement content required. Say for example, in this case, we need 3.6% cement to achieve a UCS of 7 MPa. Now, at this cement content, 3.6%, you again conduct modified proctor test so that you know the OMC and maximum dry density at your design cement content. Then the next step will be to determine the flexural strength. So for flexural strength, you cast the beam of this size at design cement content and at OMC and maximum dry density and cure the specimen for seven days and then test under third point loading. Now this is how the beam is tested till failure load. And you note down what is the load at failure. You calculate the models of rupture using this equation. There are two equations given in the code. If you include the weight of the beam, then this equation is to be used. If you exclude the weight of the beam, then this is a simpler equation, PL upon BD square. If you include the weight of the beam, then in the P, P is the load at failure. We include three-fourth of the weight of the specimen also. B is the average width of the specimen, D is the average depth of the specimen, and W is the weight of the specimen. And P is the maximum applied load in kg at failure. The next parameter is the durability test. And this test is given in IRC SP 89 of 2010 and 2018. Now two methods are given in the code. Method one is for moderate temperature and climate conditions. And method two is for areas having large variation in temperature and climatic condition. And which method is to be used that is to be decided by the chief engineer at site. Now, in both cases, sample size is same as for unconfined compressive strength, that is either Q or cylindrical specimen. Now in method one, two sets, each of three specimen are prepared. First set is cured for seven days in humid conditions by keeping specimen in desiccators. And then this set is immersed in water for next seven days. It the second set is cured in humid conditions for 14 days without immersing in the water. And then we determine the average compressive strength of both the sets. The loss in strength due to immersion in water is the strength of the first set of a specimen, that is the specimen which was immersed in water for seven days, divided by the strength of the second set of a specimen without immersing in the water. And this ratio should not be less than 0.8. Now in the second method, which is the wetting and dry test or freeze and thawing test as per IS4332 part four, freeze and thawing test is recommended for areas which are snow bound and wetting and drying test is recommended for areas which are not snow bound. Now here also we prepare three specimens but here only one set is prepared. Immerse the specimen in water for four hours and then dry at 71 degrees centigrade for 42 hours. And after that, the specimen is brushed in a standardized manner with a wire brush, 20 strokes on the sides and four stroke at each end. And then you record the loss in weight after brushing. Now carry out 12 such cycles and determine the total loss in the weight after 12 cycles. In freeze and thawing test, 
A similar procedure is used as in case of wet and dry. The only difference is the test cycle here will consist of freezing the sample at minus 23 degrees centigrade for 24 hours, followed by thawing at 21 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. So initial of immersing in the water and drying in the oven, we freeze the sample at minus 23 degrees centigrade and then thaw the sample at 21 degrees centigrade for 24 hours. And then sample is brushed in the same manner as in the case of wet and dry test. Now what the IRC code says that loss after 12 cycle should not be more than 14%. So finally the test report will consist of the proportioning of aggregates, a table showing the test results of OMC, maximum dry density, liquid limit and plasticity index at and different cement content like this, that you have different cement contents and these parameters in a tabular format. Then a graph showing UCS versus cement content as I showed in my earlier slides. OMC, maximum dry density on selected cement content and a fragile strength of the final mix at selected cement content. And also durability test results on the final mix. So friends, thanks for watching. You can write your comment suggestion in the comment box.